Hey YouTube, New York half ass Proper here. I'm doing this video at the request of a couple people. Um, I haven't made a video in a long time and a couple people have been asking me to uh, make a video, not necessarily this one, but I figured I would do this kind of as a public service announcement. Um, recently, or not, not so recently, actually back in uh, April, I was diagnosed with um, severe sleep apnea. Um, I knew what that was. Uh, my my parents, both my parents have sleep apnea. Um, my sister and my brother both have it, and some other people I know. So my my mother actually worked as a uh, as a polysomnogram technician years ago, so I was familiar with the vocabulary. Um, but I had no idea that I really had it. I kind of suspected it, but uh, I was able to get diagnosed and. Um, got this machine. Now what this machine is, is a uh, CPAP. Uh, actually this is an auto CPAP, which means that some of the functions are automatic on it. Um, if you are a truck driver, or an airline pilot, or a boat captain, like myself, um, you're going to get an education about what this is all about, because anyone with a neck size, I think it's 19 inches or greater, uh, that meets other criteria, um, is going to be flagged for sleep apnea, and you're going to have to go get tested if you want to continue driving over the road, or flying aircraft, or uh, piloting ships, or whatever your trade might be. Um, they're doing this in response to the Metro North engineer that. Uh, I guess those guys are going to be covered too, that, that crashed the train, and his excuse was uh, sleep apnea, which he got diagnosed afterwards. Um, now, a little bit of uh, history on my thing is I was having trouble staying awake uh, on a tug going across the harbor, and the next day, the way my job works is um, it's all about the tides. We have to go to these docks at high water, and the next high water is the earliest opportunity we can get back over there. Um, so generally you have 12 hours and 50 minutes in between the jobs, and we use that to rest. And I was sleeping, I would sleep for 8 hours, get up and do a couple things during the day, you know, during the downtime, and then I could go back to sleep for another 3 or 4 hours. And then as I'm steaming across the harbor in the middle of the night, I'm falling asleep. I'm basically slapping myself to keep myself awake. So I said I had to do something, so... At the earliest convenience, I saw the doctor, I saw a doctor, and uh, he was kind enough to give me a, um, he prescribed what's called a sleep study. Um, I, I refer to it as sleeping in the box or the cube, but it's actually very comfortable when you go over there, the sleep lab. It's like a, um, reminds me of like a hotel room. What really reminds me of the old military barracks because you share a bathroom. So you go in the room and there's a um, full size bed there. And then there's a little bathroom in the back to do your business. And then up through the other side of the bathroom, like the Brady Bunch, there's another uh, patient or testee or whatever you want to call it on the other side. Um, in my case, it was this, this uh, Sikh Indian gentleman back there. And uh, really nice guy, but it sounded like somebody was choking him when he was sleeping. So I, didn't, I knew why he was there. Uh, but anyway, to make a long story short, you have to go to this place at 9, 10 o'clock at night. They wire you up with all kinds of uh, sensors and wires and whatnot all over you, like eyelids, legs, because uh, they want to get the whole experience. They have a videotape, they'll watch you to see what position you're in while you're sleeping, and you wire it up to the computer. And uh, you sleep basically for uh, about eight hours, maybe a little less. And um, you fall asleep, and usually uh, they'll wake you up in the middle of the night to... Uh, to put the CPAP mask on you. Um, this is what a mask looks like, or a face piece. I have to use a full face one because I have a deviated septum, but they have some other sleeker, sexier styles out there, and then when you get into this machine, you'll be all over what kind of mask you have and stuff. Um, because this machine, to be honest with you, is a lifesaver. I do not go anywhere. I don't go to work without it. I don't travel without it. Um, this thing's been out to Ebomi's. Um, it's been all over the place uh, because I will not sleep without it. It's uh, it's been a lifesaver for me. 
And if you suspect, if you are a white middle-aged male, uh, possibly a little overweight, and you snore, you're at risk for the sleep apnea. So I suggest you talk to your doctor about it and get treated sooner rather than later because if you don't, don't get it treated, this disease or condition, I should call it, causes a lot of heart attacks and a lot of strokes. And a lot of people, they don't even know they have it, and they basically you stop breathing in the middle of the night, and uh, that's bad. It's, you're killing your brain cells. Um, not to mention you're putting yourself and your family and the people you work with at risk during the daytime because you're not properly rested. It causes you, you to come out of REM sleep. It causes you actually to wake up. So if you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you're kind of gasping for air, um, that's a good sign that you have sleep apnea. And uh, as I mentioned before, all you airline pilots, uh, over-the-road truck drivers, you guys are going to get an education because now you're getting flagged to go down and get tested for the sleep apnea. And you're going to have to prove to a doctor that you don't have sleep apnea before they'll sign off on you uh, to go back to work. So this is this is serious business. A lot of agencies and feds and stuff are taking this thing seriously. Um, but my story has been one of total success. I got diagnosed. I got the machine. I was sleeping better the very next night. Um, this machine is magical. Uh, it allows you to sleep the whole night through without waking up, without being interrupted. Um, you dream amazing dreams when you're on this machine because you stay in REM sleep. And you wake up refreshed. And you wake up, your eyes open up, and you can't even like lay around in the bed anymore. You just you get up and you're ready for the day. Uh, which has been my experience with this machine. So, um, and don't get hung up. I got this machine through the insurance company originally. And they have a lot of silly rules that you have to use it four hours every night. Because um, they have a lot of problems with people that get the machine and they don't like it. They don't like the mask on their face. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, to have this on your face for eight hours at night. Um... And a lot of people are like claustrophobic, they don't like the mask, but they should really uh, see a shrink about it because this is a real lifesaver. But they have other styles that just go nasal pillows and stuff that, that are a little bit easier to deal with. But, um, but most of the problem is, is uh, psychological in those cases. Um, and the, the, the hose, I have another mask, this is another style, another brand of mask goes on the end here and it basically this operates like a vacuum cleaner in reverse it just blows air at a certain pressure and there's a little computer in here and some circuitry to tell you uh, tell, tell the computer or the blower how much air to blow how much you need for that night um, but the doctor people take care of that but anyway back to these machines they're very expensive I think they're um, they probably retail about five six hundred dollars maybe maybe more I'm not sure I never purchased one retail, but the insurance companies cover it. The catch is you have to use it for four hours a night. I'm all in on CPAP, so it's not a big deal for me. However, I have to go to work, and what I've done is I purchased a second machine that I leave on the tugboat at work, uh, and I leave it there so I don't have to pack this up every time I go to work, because I don't go to work. Uh, I used to work a week on and a week off on the old tug that I worked on, this tug, I work, it's called a day boat, and I work when there's work. So, for instance, I'm going to go in Monday evening for the high tide. I have to be at the customer's dock at high water, pick up their cargo of scrap metal, and bring it over to the port. Now, this happens in the middle of the night, uh, depending on when the tide is, is when I have to be there. Um, so, generally, it's about uh, five hours, start to finish, to get the customer's cargo and get it over to Port Newark, where it's unloaded the next day. The longshoremen come in at 7 a.m. and they start in unloading the cargo with the grapple. You've seen my videos. That takes uh, anywhere from six to eight hours. When they get done with it, I take the empty barge back, and that's usually the following evening's uh, high tide to uh, bring it back in. So I'll go to work for those two days, and then I'll be off for three, four days, however long it takes for the customer to get enough scrap to fill that barge up again for us. So it's sporadic. So rather than pack this thing up into the little case, it comes with a little carrying case. I got it right here. It zips up. It's like an old uh, VCR camera bag. You know, the old school uh, camcorders, the big ones. 
um, it goes in that bag, you zip it up, and you uh, t you can travel with it. So I bought a second one, and um, the people that are not compliant, there are a few people that lose a little bit of weight, and they don't need the machine anymore. Um, and then there's people that get three machines from their insurance company because they're all in. The insurance company will basically give you a new one every year because uh, this is all medical shit. It expires. They take the expiration stuff seriously and the certifications. So they sell them on Craigslist. So I picked up a second machine for $125 on Craigslist, which I keep at my job. So, uh, and uh, there's other YouTube videos that show you how to manipulate the settings and stuff on there, even the secret doctor settings um, you can manipulate. And you can um, basically get a machine off of Craigslist with low hours and use it for yourself. So don't get hung up on the insurance company paying and uh, if you can afford it and all of that nonsense because that's the dealio. Um, these masks and stuff, the insurance company sends me one every three months. Um, however, I keep the old ones. I just uh, clean them out with soap and water. Same with the hoses. So I have extra stuff to uh, fall back on. And now for the prepper part of the video. Um, they do make these machines in a portable version with a battery on it. So that you can go to a place that has no power like when you're camping. Or if you're on a sailboat that doesn't have 110 volts of electricity, they don't have a generator, you can sleep with your CPAP machine. I don't have one of those machines. They cost more. The insurance company said in a year I could choose to get one of those uh, given to me. Uh, however, in the case of a blackout or whatever, it's powered by a 60-watt uh, power brick. Same ones that are on your computers and and everything else and if you look at the specs it'll tell you the voltage on here and in this case it's 12 volts and what I'm going to consider doing in an emergency I don't have to do this right away because I have a backup generator here and so forth is, is cut this wire taking note of the polarity and hook it up to a big giant 12 volt battery and uh, these machines don't they don't draw a lot so that should be enough to get you through uh, six eight hours of uh, sleeping and then you know you use your solar or something to uh, recharge the battery so that would be you know uh, I could jury rig something in an emergency if I have to because I want to be well rested during any kind of crisis period for obvious reasons and uh, that would be one way to go about it uh, but my my plan is to wait my year of having this machine and get a um, one with the battery so I can charge it up and It'll be a good backup machine for when I work on the smaller tugs and stuff that don't, it's not, they have generators, but it's not feasible to run it for eight hours while everybody's sleeping for no other purpose than that. So, that's the deal. That's my rant. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to help you with it. Um, I'm all in on this stuff, on this CPAP thing, and uh, I suggest that if you're thinking about it, if you think you got it, if your wife says you snore too much, if you're having trouble uh, with being tired at work or be tired driving, um, get with your doctor, get yourself diagnosed. Um, I'm not a big fan of the doctors. In fact, I was actually considering treating myself for this, and the guy talked me out of it. He says, go, he was going to sell me a machine, and he says, you should really see your doctor if you think you really have this disease or this condition. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. So, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm here to help. If, if anybody has any questions, if anybody's on the fence about this, uh, I'm trying to get you, get you on board with this. Anybody that uses this, these machines full-time, they rave about them. They love them. It's kind of inconvenient. It sucks having this thing on your face. But being a retired New York City firefighter and uh, working other jobs where you had to wear dust masks and so forth, uh, this, is, this is not even an issue. And the hose, I wake up with this hose wrapped around my neck, under my arm, and it doesn't bother me. I sleep right through it. So uh, your, your mileage may vary on that. All right, I'm out.